get started. Uh, my name is Hannah Barnett. I'm a math teacher. I'm in a high school uh, for Baltimore City Public Schools. Um, I'm really excited uh, to be spending time in Chile around the theme of alternative education programs. Um, in my daily life um, as a high school teacher, my days are filled with lesson planning, small children, parents, after school activities. Um, everything that goes along with the high school classroom and you oftentimes don't get a lot of time to think, um, to really analyze what you're doing, to think about the systems, think about the classes that you're teaching and the impact that you're really having. Um, so here in Chile, I'm really focusing on alternative education. And I've realized uh, from my first conversations uh, with different university professors and teachers and principals that that's something that I kind of need to define. Um, as I've been referred to, the walled up schools, or to um, some of the most <laughs> expensive private schools. Um, and when I'm talking about alternative education, what I'm looking for is in Baltimore City, um, I think we have a tremendously hardworking group of teachers. We have a lot of talent, um, but still, um, with our current system, we're losing a lot of students. Um, I've worked in schools where graduation rates around 50 to 60 percent. Um, and of that 50 to 60 percent, college enrollment, not college completion, but college enrollment is around a third or lower. Um, so my concern around alternative education is what options are we providing to our high school students? Um, there's a lot of research on elementary and middle schools, but not a lot on high schools. Um, so looking here in Santiago um, at what they have done in some of their public schools um, and subsidized schools, um, of what they've done to re-engage their students, um, to get them back in the classroom, and to becoming productive citizens in society. Um, Yes, and when I return to Baltimore, um, so I'm on sabbatical this year, um, so I'll have these four months in Chile, and then I plan to visit a few other innovative schools around the world. Um, and then I'm especially excited to, when I return to Baltimore, as Baltimore um, has an administration that's very open um, to new and innovative ideas. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, uh, I was born in England. Uh, my family moved to the United States when I was a year old. Um, so they have beautiful British accents, except for me. Um, I went to school at Marquette University, uh, where I started uh, as a math. I thought I was going to study math. Uh, and funny, now I'm a math teacher. I took through Calc 3 and um, found that I was becoming more passionate around issues. Um, Marquette is based in Milwaukee, around issues of inequality, um, systems of injustice, and segregation, and discrimination, and was becoming far more passionate about that. Um, I decided I wanted to study social welfare and justice, and also Spanish literature, language, and culture, um, and thought that I was going to be a social worker. And then um, during my junior year, I went to Cape Town, South Africa for a service learning program. Um, and I was placed at a fair trade uh, craft and design institute, and I learned there that I was far jealous of all of my peers who were placed in schools working with children. I, was, I, I wasn't interested in the business model, I wasn't interested in sitting at a computer very much. Um, and so at that point I decided I wanted to become a teacher um, and join Teach for America where I initially started as a high school Spanish teacher, basic Spanish 1 and 2, still working on my Spanish here in Chile, and um, eventually earned my certification in mathematics. Um, I earned my Master's of Arts in Teaching from John Hopkins. Um, and uh, just a couple years ago, finished uh, my certification um, in advanced study. Um, essentially, it's your certificate that allows you to be a principal or assistant principal. Um, for me, that's a long-term goal. Uh, more so, it opens a lot more doors if you have your administrator wants a certificate in the education field. Um, so Baltimore, um, I wasn't sure, exactly sure who members of the audience might be. Uh, Baltimore, from what I've heard in Santiago, uh, little is known. Um, some People tend to know The Wire in the United States even, kind of identified as Wire, um, House of Cards, High Crime, Violent Area. Um, while some of those things are definitely true, um, the Baltimore that I know is more um, full, of life, um, full of parks, beautiful places to hang out, um, nice port, uh, National Aquarium, known for its Reginald Lewis Museum of African American History and Culture. Um, that's the Baltimore that over the last eight years I've sort of come to fall in love with um, and would call my home. Um, so I've had two very different experiences in Baltimore City. Um, I started uh, and worked for six years at W.E.B. Du Bois High School. Um, it's in Northeast Baltimore, um, high poverty school, um, probably around 90, about 90% 90 receiving free and reduced lunch. 
Um, many students living in group homes, foster homes, um, some students living independently. Um, absentee, a daily attendance rate was around 70%, somewhere in the 70s. Um, chronic absentee rate, uh, about half of our students. And what that means is that half of our students are missing 20 or more days of school during the school year. Um, and a graduation rate that I last saw in 2014 of about 59%. Um, so just given those things, um, that kind of has jarred, I guess, a little bit of my frustration and a little bit of my worry um, about the results we're producing in our students. Um, W.B. Du Bois High School was closed in 2014, um, a year after I left, um, and I'd gone to Benjamin Franklin High School, um, which is in the complete opposite direction in southeast Baltimore City. Um, still public high school, um, but with a principal who has um, a niche for um, getting different business uh, investments and working with different partnerships in the community um, to build a community high school. Um, and this was a turnaround school five or six years ago, um, and it's been an incredible change for me. Um, the school, for example, has a parenting and daycare center, so students with children um, can bring their children to the school to be in daycare while they're attending classes, as he sees it as an obstacle. Um, we have countless social workers and different supports for our students. Um, teachers have been uh, trained around capturing kids' hearts, which is all about relationship building. Um, it's all around making sure that you have a student's heart before you can access their head. Um, it's about starting class every day with something that we call good things, where students enter, we do a drill, and then we do good things. And literally, I start, or a student will sometimes lead it by saying, do you have anything good? and students will share different things going on in their life that are good and clap for one another. And it's um, just the school itself is much more um, like a family, much more like a community. Um, and we've seen a lot of progress on those grounds, but still the school struggles with things like graduation rate, academic indicators, um, and test scores. Um, so it still has a lot of room for growth. Um, my experience there has been with um, newcomer students. Um, most of my students for the last two years um, have been from Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. Um, so I've sort of taken on the role of the Spanish math teacher. Um, there's not a lot of math teachers in Baltimore uh, who can speak some Spanish uh, and speak about math as well. Um, so I'll have classes of anywhere from like 10 to 30 students that are all newcomers, um, anywhere from 14, which is regular ninth grade status, um, to 18 or 19 years old. Um, but still, I see the same problems uh, with our newcomer immigrant students is if you're <coughs> in high school at 16 or 17, you have no credits, you're in a completely new city, you don't know the language, uh, it can be very intimidating, there's a lot of different family pressures to, to work, a lot of things, you know, if they need a place to stay. Um, some of them have grown up for 16 years in Guatemala with their uncle or aunt, and now for the first time are living with new family. That might be a grandmother they've met, never met, it might be their parent that they've never met or seen maybe once or twice in their life. Um, so the challenges that they're facing um, are extreme, but I can say that they are a very resilient, hardworking, fantastic children in Baltimore, um, but it's just about figuring out uh, what program will work best for them. Um, because I don't feel satisfied as a teacher seeing graduation rates around 50, 60, 70 percent. Um, and knowing those numbers is one thing, but when you actually know the faces and the stories, um, it sheds it in a completely different light. Um, I have had some experience working with alternative programs in Baltimore. Um, at W. Du B. Du Bois High School, we received um, a government grant to start a transitional evening school. Um, this was for students who were not successful in the regular day model and um, attended two classes in the evening for about 90 minutes each and um, at an accelerated pace. Um, I've also worked with students who are doing an APEX program, which is where they take classes on the computer, so they'll work really hard on the computer on English course for nine weeks and they'll switch and do another one on the computer. Um, I've also, this past year, um, started a youth build, helped start a youth build program, which was for students that would um, come to school one week and then learn a trade such as carpentry or masonry or electrician. Um, but with all of these programs, um, most of them closed, including the one that was started this past year, and most of them followed the same model where we have students, still you might call the school a different name, 
you might have, have it at a different time of day, but it's still the same structure of students sitting in classes for the same 60, 90 minutes, taking the exact same classes and following the same routine. Um, so what really brought me to Chile is trying to find an alternative model where we can re-engage our students in education um, and trying to learn um, what can we learn from different models that are being used around the world um, because uh, so far in Santiago from what I've seen uh, I've been to one um, school and I had an incredible experience there I'll share more about that in a minute um, and how can we support our students in becoming productive citizens because while you want the graduation rate to go up while you, you want test scores to go up the ultimate goal I think of a high school is to make them become a productive citizen whether that's working whether that's going on to higher education um, whether that's pursuing some sort of trade um, so I was drawn to Santiago in Chile because uh, probably about a year and a half ago I was starting on a little more time to relax uh, and I was reading articles about different um, school models around the world and came across a report on the top 10 schools for the 21st century um, and in there it highlighted of course schools in Finland <laughs> because Finland is the uh, you know what we all want for our education system uh, but unfortunately, that's, that's not really a comparable model for the U.S. And so I found one in Santiago, Chile, and um, Colegio Cardenal de Cracovia, where it's a completely student-run school. They have their own student government. They have their own money system. They have a judicial system. They have a president um, of the school. Um, there's the ministers of all the different departments. Um, and I was like, I have to go see the school. Like, I want to know how it works because it's a public school. It has no extra money. Um, it's making do with the resources. Um, I want to see what this student-run school looks like. Um, and so that's how um, I came to want to come to uh, Santiago. And I had the pleasure of visiting there um, last week for two days. And I'm working on setting up a model where I'll be visiting there one or two days a week. Um, getting to know their students and getting to know the systems there. Last week I had a fantastic introduction where I felt like I was the queen, where they introduced me to every teacher there and every secretary and every student wanted a hug and a kiss. And um, on Friday they had their Fiestas Patria celebration, which is about a four hour long uh, celebration where all the different classes um, did like a dance to a song from a different area of Chile. Um, they're just, they were the most friendly, kind, loving school that I think I've ever been to, providing breakfast, lunch, and dinner for, like, just incredible people. Um, so I'm really excited to work with them. Their founder, um, Juan Carlos, is extremely passionate about issues uh, around inequality. Um, as he originally started the school um, for students that had been removed or expelled from all the other schools in the area. Um, so I feel like we're on very similar paths um, in that regard. So I'm very excited about that partnership. Um, hopefully, I'm uh, just getting started, so I don't know too much about the route I'm going, um, whether it's going to turn into um, alternative education where it's a school model, where when I go back to Baltimore I want to start a different school model, if it'll be something on a classroom level where I'll do something different in my classroom and share those strategies with other teachers, um, whether it'll be something specifically tied to um, the students who I've worked with for the past two years who are specifically English language learners, um, whether it will be tailored to them. Um, that I'm not sure, um, but I know that when I go back to Baltimore, I'm going to want to bring back um, what I've learned here um, and uh, kind of put that into uh, practice. Yeah, that's me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.